Hi everybody, my name is Pen Clicking Jen and today's gonna be a special video because it is a final project creative thing for a English theater class that I'm taking. I sound like a robot. Had a research question that was theater? YouTube? Woo! Huh. Hmm. And I did a whole bunch of research and I finally have come up with a thesis that is by analyzing the aspect of live performance within digital theater in comparison with how new media entertainers utilize their talents, it can be understood that these entertainers can contribute to theater, but they should not be labeled as theater professionals. And the layout of this video is going to be to find stuff for you. Uh, my opposition, blah, specific example, Brecht. Uh, past the screen and then finally my conclusion so yeah I am going to let you guys know that I'm gonna be paraphrasing a whole bunch of smart people so and the MLA formats of the things I've taken the smart people words from are gonna be down in the, in the description below before I get really argumentative and start screaming at you guys to like you know come on understand me please <laughs> defining things for you uh, digital theater and digital digital performance as defined by Mazura and Dixon. They're sort of the same thing with different wordings and such and so forth. Basically it means that it is the presence of digital media in the performance. Ta-da! Woohoo! And then there's also web theater which is defined by Jordan Tannehill and it basically means that it's the same sort of thing as digital theater and digi digital performance but with internet applications applied. And then finally, what I mean by new media is YouTube. Uh, that's the one I'm most interested in. There are other platforms I could use and explain, but for the sake of time, I am going to be just talking about YouTubers and YouTube. Next, people who don't agree with me. Why not compare YouTubers with filmmakers? It's logical. Yes, it is logical, but YouTubers don't exactly have millions of dollars to make one video like the filmmakers do. And theater, likewise, does not have a whole million dollar budget normally, unless it might be Broadway, but I'm not quite sure about that. Either way, theater and YouTubers don't have a humongous budget, and this way I find that they can connect with their audience a bit better. You know, kind of like heart to heart, you know. Ow! Ugh. YouTubers are not serious like actors. I mean, have you seen Nicolas Cage in his latest movie? Hello? First of all, I use the term YouTuber because it is an actual job that people make a living on and YouTubers, I assume that they want to eat and contribute to society, so I would take that they are going to be serious about what they do. So it's a very hard process. It's a whole creative process. You have to think brainstorm for one video and then you have to shoot it and then you have to edit it and then you have to upload it. It takes a lot of time and in order to put that much effort into something someone has to be serious about what they're doing. And theater professionals they put a lot of time into one production. Therefore I think they're both very serious. Woo hi. YouTube doesn't happen in real time. This is true. However I'm gonna refer to Matthew Causey who basically says that theater is an illusion illu happens in illusory space of immediacy, which basically means that you know plays don't happen in the exact time and place that they are set in. You're not watching a uh, Wild West in the Wild West. You are watching some New Yorker playing a cowboy on a stage in a studio. You know, same thing, YouTubers. You we know it's not happening right then and there unless it's a live stream. One point live stream happens live. Woo! What was I saying? Right, 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 what? We know YouTube videos don't normally happen in real time, but due to the conversational tone of many vloggers and even gamers who are commenting on games, we can trick our brains into thinking that it's happening right then and there and that we're connecting with the performer. So, yeah, that's a thing. Next, Rihanna Boy 95. That's my specific example. And please, if you haven't watched it, go watch it after you watch this video. It is incredibly inspiring play that's web theater play. Uh, it does contain mature subject matter and cursing, but honestly, you'll want to hug Sonny after you watch it. Tanahel in an article explained why he decided to write 
uh, Rihanna Boy 9 to 5 as a web theater play instead of a stage play because he thought that it felt false to have Sonny spilling his guts out to an audience. Basically, he decided that having his web theater made it more intimate for not just Sonny, but also for the audience. And in the Canadian theater review that this article was published in, uh, in the introduction article, uh, Peter Kuling and Laura Levin explained that YouTube has become a very popular place for theatrical staging of self. So why I included this is because theater professionals even think that YouTube has some theatrical elements to it. Also, Rihanna Boy 95 has ties to app to applied theater, which is defined by Megan Alvarez as uh, attends to the ideas and questions relating to community, education, participation, as well as power and activism. And Rihanna Boy 95 discusses LGBT and bullying issues in Canada. Albert shortly after, shortly after argues that digital, digital storytelling and applied theater are, have many parallels in their history. They complement each other and this, the fact that they can work together means that they can create this new dynamic and multi-layered approach to performance. Like, hey, these two can go hand in hand because they're interesting and they can, you know, help change the world. What? Oh, I'm starting to change the world. I'm like a superhero, but I'll continue. Although this doesn't mean that YouTubers can be considered theater professionals because ultimately, as Tana Hell explains, uh, the audience and the performer need to share in a, uh, the same space and there has to be an element of liveness to it. Ultimately, they're not theater professionals and that's fine. I understand that. You don't have to go all <laughs> told you. <laughs> I, I get it. Okay. I know. I'm just making a general comparison. Next, new media entertainers can be uh, well, they can utilize theatrical performance styles like how Brecht explains epic theater, which the lowdown of that is performers can break away from their characters in order to comment on the situation that they're talking about, as in how street scenes, street theater um, is made. By doing this, they have the audience sort of become part of the criticism of what they're performing. This is you know similar to YouTube because YouTubers encourage comments and they can also break away from the character that they're telling a story about or a story of themselves or to comment on it. So it's kind of like epic theater that way. Tony Sands even uh, refers to this when he is talking about Mark Stephen Meadows and what he says in, uh, about the connection between street theater and internet performance. So once again, a professional is making this connection. All these different techniques can be transferred between disciplines and this transferring is important because it creates something new and exciting. And this is important because audiences these days and age, according to Berlin, they criticize uh, performance because of the technology that we have in our lives. So they, they're very um, judgmental and they want to be part of the performance too. Epic theater can be now incorporated into technology which makes audiences happier because they feel like they're being part of it and it's also like, hey, this is new, this is surprising. And yes, while Burling does uh, make this connection between children, it can also be connected to all audiences in my opinion. Both of these are trying to engage the audiences in new exciting ways. By this point in the video you're kind of thinking, okay great, so maybe there's a bit of a connection, but your thesis was talking about how theater, how YouTubers can contribute to theater. And now I'm going to finally address that. What Dixon mentions is that theater professionals, you know, they utilize all these digital things in their performances because they are trying to enhance it, they're experimenting, they're not trying to take, they're not trying to let technology take over what has, what is a traditional art form. Uh, and same way YouTubers aren't trying to take over theater, they're just utilizing it and they're saying, hey, this is cool, let's experiment with this, you know, like, why not? YouTubers will use theatrical techniques in order to um, emphasize the fact that they want a close-knit community, you know, as opposed to filmmaking because it's, you know, very, because no matter what, there's a screen there and they want to somehow break that screen and be like, hey, let's connect. As a result, uh, Anne Larrabee um, mentions 
theater, not here, it is now out here. Now let's talk about it because we can all connect. How I'm interpreting this is that YouTubers want to give people the whole world a giant hug, be like, hey, let's share things because you know, usually you can't get this hug from that person because of where you live, but now let's try to make that different, so yeah. Other than that, there are specific YouTube examples of those who do contribute to theater. For example, Colleen Ballinger, who plays Miran the character Miranda Sings on YouTube, goes and does live shows as her character. Lily Singh, who is known as II Superwoman II on YouTube, also does live shows that incorporate dance and comedy as what she is well known for on YouTube. Thomas Sanders, who is a well-known Vine star and also a YouTuber, is very active in his community theater. Fans go come from all over to come see his shows just because they want to see him perform live and so thereby he's endorsing theater. And there's other examples like Dan is Not on Fire, Amazing Phil, Memory Hart, My Harto, Grace Helbig, Tyler Oakley. All these people do tours, do live shows, encourage the earth to come encourage theater, <laughs> encourage people to come see uh, theatrical type of performances. By doing this, YouTubers show that theater can be just as exciting as watching them on a screen. You know, it's like it's taking it past, it's taking it through the looking glass and saying, hey, look, this is awesome, go see theater. That's basically my argument. So to address the so what question, I think that it's important to discuss the contributions that various arts disciplines can give each other because it makes things new and exciting and you know we can all learn from each other. It's very, it's, it helps to enhance the creative environment. And then also people who make a living by uploading to YouTube, they are often you know looked down upon by society because people think they don't work as hard, but they do as I have explained. Me personally, I feel comfortable on YouTube and this is important for me because I deal a lot with social anxiety. I also really enjoy performing in live theater shows, but unfortunately this doesn't always happen, so I have turned to YouTube as a way to actually be able to express myself uh, because, you know, I feel theater and YouTube allow me to break away from the fear I have of stuttering or people not listening to me because I'm the quiet girl in the back. And I hope that one day I can take all this that I've learned from YouTube and from theater into my real life and become this person every day as opposed to... Basically what I'm trying to say is I'm very passionate about this subject. I really hope that I have helped you guys to understand the connection I see between these two mediums. We're into the age of technology. We should be looking how these things can connect. That being said, go watch a local play because I highly endorse uh, live theater. It's, it is different than YouTube, so it's a new experience. It's fun, really it is. And also theater is a great community to be a part of, just as YouTube is a great community to be a part of. And yeah, that's my video. You can like, subscribe, comment, you know, especially if you disagree with me, go right ahead, argue your butt off, that's fine. Uh, share this with people you know. Until next time, keep reading, keep writing, and I love you all. Bye!